still uh, 1979 and um, I came back to Brighton to my house after this um, experience week and uh, tried to get my head around all the experiences that I'd had there and um, after a while I thought okay well uh, there was a program that uh, one could go back and do at the foundation uh, for a short period of time to decide whether you were able to commit to the um, being there on a full-time basis. So um, I made up my mind to go for three weeks and during that three weeks I thought okay if the Angel of Findhorn wants me then I'll go. So I went back and uh, worked the three weeks in uh, the kitchens <laughs> which was a kind of strange place for someone who had just given up running a restaurant and saying they'd had enough of cooking but here I was back in a kitchen environment and of course it was a totally different environment to what I'd been used to. The pressure wasn't there in the same way that as when running a restaurant and of course it's a group experience so you're working with people who are supporting each other and working in a totally different and a new way of creating uh, we were cooking, I guess, for around, um, what, 250, something like that in those days. And so it was a pretty um, busy time. Didn't have to work all that hard. Well, I didn't think it was very hard. Some people seemed to think it was. But there always seemed to be plenty of people helping out in the kitchen. And guests, of course, came and helped out in the kitchen. And you only did one shift a day and then another group came in to do the other shift. So you either did a uh, lunch shift or a dinner shift. Anyhow, um, having spent the three weeks there and uh, talking with uh, a lot of people and then having a very formal kind of interview with uh, a couple of people who sat with you and asked questions and decided whether you were the sort of person who needed to be there and the decision was that yeah okay um, I could go and live there for whatever period of time it took so I then went back home to Brighton and had to try and make a decision as to whether I would sell my house or to rent the house and I thought well okay I'll hedge my bets here and rent the house and I found someone who was interested in renting and uh, so that was kind of set up and then I was waiting really for the next intake of people because at certain times of year they used to take a group in who would then um, come into membership together um, and this was the summer when um, the England had one of the best summers ever so I spending it pretty well all the time on the beach and being with friends and and just having a good old lazy time uh, one day I was there and uh, a friend of mine came along with another friend of his and um, this other friend said oh I'd like to meet this guy me and um, my friend said to him oh no um, there's no point in you meeting him he's going to become uh, a monk and of course people have it fixed in their heads that um, if you're going to do anything kind of spiritual then uh, it has to be within um, a religious order, um, a monastery or some such. Anyhow, um, I met this guy, he came over and talked to me and his name was David and we seemed to um, get on really well and he was at a stage in his life where he was wanting to do different and new things. So um, well, one of the things that I had been interested in and I came interested in it through a program that was on TV and it was called The Good Life and it was about uh, a couple who decided that they would give up their jobs and grow vegetables and have animals and things like this and this had always appealed to me so it was another part of what I really wanted to do with my life and as I was talking with David he seemed to be wanting to do this same kind of thing and um, so we met 
and we got on really well, as I said. And it seemed to me that uh, maybe uh, my life might be moving in a direction with somebody else, like him. And uh, I hadn't heard from the Foundation um, as to when this program was going to be starting, where I could go back into membership. So um, I kind of set uh, in my head um, a, t a date and a time when, um, if I hadn't heard from the Foundation, then um, David and I would actually do something together. And so I was um, sitting in this house, and he happened to be there at the same time, and uh, on this particular day that I'd said, okay, well now I need to um, hear on this day and this time, and if I hadn't then that was it. And um, he was quite understanding about this and knew that I had felt this very inner longing of going to this place to live. So um, we had had breakfast and um, the time came when the mail should have arrived and the mail hadn't arrived and so there was no letter from the foundation. And so I said, okay, um, then we'll do something together. We'll go and we'll try and find a place to live and to do self-sufficiency. Well, for some extraordinary reason, um, the mail arrived very much later that day and in the mail was this acceptance of my membership and that I was due to go up to the foundation later that month. Uh, but I'd made the decision and so I thought, okay, I can't back out of it now. I need to follow through on this commitment. And so I wrote back to the foundation and said, look, at this moment in time, I'm not ready to come, but I would like to leave the door open. And so hopefully at some point I may come. And so they wrote back to me and said, yeah, that's fine, that's okay. Um, whenever you're ready, you can come back and you can come into membership. And so that's how it was left. And I thought that, okay, um, Fintorn and I probably don't have to be together. But, hey, that was a little bit premature. Anyhow, I'm going to talk next time about the move to Wales and our venture into self-sufficiency. And that's a very interesting story. So, chat to all later.